Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Samsung Developer Conference 2017. Brought to you by Samsung. Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE's exclusive coverage of the Samsung Developer Conference here in San Francisco at Moscone West. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media, co-host of theCUBE. I'm here with Gregarius Naran, who's the co-founder of Before Alpha, an old friend of mine who introduced me to podcasting back in 2004, right when the MP3 was put into the RSS feed, the early days of blogging, early days of social. You're one of the most uh, prolific social engineers I know. You've been there from day one. Um, great to see you. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah, it's long what a, time. What a wave it's been. Uh, Web 2.0, you were at the front end We're of creating with the Fortunately, group. they didn't make a 3.0. <laughs> Thank God, because <laughs> Web 2.0 bursted. But, but that was the, those were the days. I mean, just take, think back, okay, Web 1.0 post bubble burst. Web 2.0, you were part of a crew of folks. We were all mm -hmm. small community at the time. Really kind of rubbing nickels together, trying to make things happen. You know, back then TechCrunch was formed, PodTech was formed, you had a, a year's venture going on. And we all were, um, before social media existed, yeah. we, we were doing stuff. Um, Scoble was brought down from Microsoft with, with my startup, PodTech. But we were all kind of trying to figure out this new infrastructure. Yeah. It ended up bubbling burst a little bit, but it ended up turning out to be true that social infrastructure was created. The Facebooks, we saw pre-Facebook pre was obviously MySpace, but the social graph, yeah. okay, that extended out from RSS with enabled blogging, create some great innovations. We're seeing the value uh, interest graphs develop. Yeah. And a term that I coined called the value graph is now extending on top of the interest graph, some term that we call in the cube, which is a new form of collaboration is happening. You're riding this new wave, you got yeah. your new firm, you're leading companies through transformation. Yep. What's your take of the Samsungs of the world? Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Google. You got a lot of these old tech yeah. guards trying to be consumer companies and infrastructure companies. B2B meets B2C, but B2B is boring to boring. Yeah. We don't want B2B anymore. We want the new. That's right. Everything to everything. Yeah. Exciting to exciting. It, I think you, know, you, you nailed a lot of the, the points I think that are really interesting because you know, innovation is really about sort of like blending cultural change and technological change together, right? Uh, and forming new things, and it usually is a, a succession of small iterations um, and some moonshots, right? Yeah. And I think like what Samsung's doing that's really interesting um, is they bring all that stuff online in real time. Like, yeah. if we don't wait, you know, 10 years to hear about yeah. what the next innovation is, it's, it's popping out, yeah. you know, before you even warm up your, your other phone, right? Yeah. Um, I think, you know, in the States, we're almost a little bit at a disadvantage in seeing the breadth of Samsung because like such of their, their footprint is actually significantly bigger. Yeah. Uh, it's not nearly as adopted here, but I think as, uh, you know, this, this, uh, the theme today was the intelligence of things, uh, really. Yeah. I think it's very powerful. And they're on idea. stage with Google. You see the relationship yeah. with Google shining forward. Obviously a lot of big applause there. Google, yeah. obviously Android. Yeah. Not Apple, no iOS. Yeah. But this speaks to the consumer company of Samsung hardware. Yeah. And even in their IOT, they're under the hood, geeky right. stuff, they're putting extra security modules in there for device security because now the hardware right. stacks are merging with software stacks. So That's this right. is the challenge, because yeah. you know how hard it is to do database yeah. work, but you got a lot of unstructured data. Yeah. Data is now a real-time dynamic. Self-driving cars, you can't have latency less than nanoseconds. Yeah. That's right. And so databases just don't <laughs> operate that way. Yeah. So a new architecture is being developed. What's your vision and thoughts of how companies are reimagining? How do, what are you seeing out there? I know it's early innings, but what are your thoughts? Well, I think you know we we went through this software as a service generation, right? Where sort of software was the, at the center, right? Social was at the edge. Now the human is moving to the center, and I would say with that they're clutching to their devices, right? And yeah. so, there, there is a piece of hardware with every person, basically, um, that's invoked, and I think hardware is now becoming as extensible as software, ultimately, yeah. and I think um, it is also being deconstructed, right? And I think a lot of like that Web 2.0 sort of aura was really the deconstruction or the, the, the breakdown of sort of large monolithic services down into smaller, discrete services that are addressable and serviceable. We're seeing that happen now on the hardware side as well. Yeah. Internet of Things is really just micro devices yeah. 
you know, that, that embody all the pieces. If you look at the trend lines right now, we're kind of going back, but connecting the dots forward, these massive tsunami going on in open source development. Uh, Linux Foundation, we were just down in LA talking about a exponential growth in new software shipped and a new class of developers coming in. Containerization and Kubernetes points yeah. to microservices. Yep. Whole nother level of developer goodness at the top of the stack. Right. Freeing up the infrastructure <laughs> configuration for the cloud, or DevOps as we call it. Yeah. This is the phenomenon, this is the big way. This isn't about developers being the guys writing, punching out code. Yeah. This is front lines stuff. And certainly yeah. AR shows and devices from Samsung show that. Well, I think the interesting thing is that the, with these hardware building blocks too though, it's allowing um, software developers to articulate hardware without actually learning the hardware bits and pieces, right? So I think it's like much like the abstraction, like you didn't have to know how bytecode was generated now you know, to work on the web, but you sort of don't have to necessarily know how hardware is put together to be able to actually command uh, an army of hardware pieces. How familiar with Samsung's cloud and, and data strategy? One of the things I see missing in the keynotes today, and clearly missing in the show, so this is kind of a critical analysis of Samsung, is they don't, I don't see a lot of the cloud. They see smart cloud, Samsung cloud sprinkled yeah. around. I don't see a lot of cloud um, um, specifics, and they're not being specific around how the data is being used. Yeah. Unlike Alibaba there in China last week, Data, 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 refueling data. Data acquisition, data yeah. usage, using data as a development tool. I'm not seeing that here. What, I, am I, I missing it, are they I showing almost, it? Well, I, I think it's some of the you know, uh, pavilions around, yeah. there, there are deeper dives in that. But I, I might argue that this is almost an intentional thing, right? Like, I, like in some ways, because we're consumerizing more and more of these pieces, you know, AI scares the crap out of a lot of people, right? Like, <laughs> and so, do I really want to go deeper? You mean in a creepy way, or just like a uh, surveillance way? I think always, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, you know, like, like people are, you know, much like with personalization, you want it all the way until it's too good, yeah. right? And you know, I think this it's is like a challenge. What else do they know about? Yeah, it. exactly, right? And so, you know, how much of the weeds are, are necessary? I think like at a developer-centric event like this, yes, like yeah. there definitely should be deeper dives, but likely not on that. So from a messaging right. standpoint, probably best not to put data out there. I think in the consumer, yeah, all this stuff, it, it, this is Blendo, right? like it all becomes consumer now, right? Like yeah. so the more you put out there, the more you sort of alienate potentially yeah. adoption. So one of the things that we see, obviously with theCUBE covers hundreds of events in the enterprise and emerging tech area, but as we get more to the consumers with Samsung, Alibaba, Amazon, and so on, the consumerization trend's definitely here. Yeah. That changes how businesses do business. Yeah. IT, information technology, or called IT departments, are no longer a department, it's now a fabric of yep. how companies work. Because you have on-premise hardware, you buy your servers, but now yeah. you're operating at a cloud model. Yep. You're using public cloud with it, Microsoft, Amazon, sure. Alibaba, Samsung, whatever. Do people care if it works? So this new yeah. phenomenon is shaping how companies are architecting their innovation strategies. Yeah. You guys are doing a lot of this at your Before Alpha venture. Yeah. What are you guys doing? Is it early days? Are you just basically like crawl, walk, run stage? Give us an update yeah, we, we on the customer. Yeah, we look at innovation from like four points of view, right? And I, as I mentioned earlier, that technological versus cultural. And really, you know, it, it goes back to like the heart of startups, right? It's like when, when large companies see startups, they're like, we love what these guys are doing. And the real question they should ask is, why do these guys exist, <laughs> right? And usually it's like either one thing, right? Like our norms or our beliefs have changed on the cultural side, or there's a new uh, model of efficacy or efficiency that's possible, right, yeah. inside of your business. And so we will get a perspective change, like am I in the right business, right? Is Samsung in the hardware business or are they in the intelligence business, right? Like sort of the question they're positing now, yeah. right? What's the persona then if we're in the intelligence business? Because suddenly it's not just people who buy hardware bits and pieces, it's all the people who consume intelligence. What are the processes we use to build yeah. that stuff? How do we surface it? And then of course, what are the products, right? What are the things that land in people's hands? Yeah, and I think one of the things I would add to that is that the element of how they use compute power. So if you look at Internet of Things, which is a message here, it's not too sexy, mainstream doesn't get yeah. IOT, but AI can surface it. Sure. Self-driving cars, essentially you know, machine learning meets IOT, which you could call AI. People can grok that and understand the self-driving car, but you know, airplane connected to the internet or yeah. machines on a factory line. That brings up the role of the data. So the compute power is critical. You don't want to move data around the network. So you know, it's interesting how companies will buy their compute. Do they yeah. rent it? Do they send it around like a virtual machine? So these yeah. are like legacy infrastructure things that are really high impact to architecture. Yeah, well and also you know, even you think about like fractional compute, right? Uh, and the whole timeshare model like for compute is also another area that 
Yeah. You, know, you have to really readjust and reconfigure the way that your entire system works to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we're seeing with like companies like Intel are transforming from being a, a chip company to, or a supplier of equipment to basically a compute company. Yeah. We're seeing things like that. And that's Greg, that perspective change, right? Well, yeah, yeah, I mean, you got to look at computers now with cloud, yeah. unlimited potential resource. You can yeah. spin up that's a zillion right. virtual machines on the cloud that's right. to do a edge analysis, whether it's a car or something yeah. else, that's a luxury we didn't have <laughs> no. back in the days when you were doing your first venture, did we? Yeah, no. No, the whole new world. <laughs> Final thoughts, what are you working on now that's the coolest thing you're doing? Give an update on what's happening for you in the next, uh, next the year or so. The coolest thing, you know, I think we, the most exciting work is when we work with companies who sort of understand that either the future um, is upon them or that they need to get ahead of it, right? And so like I'd say when we're working with customers that do that perspective change, it's like really reinventing their, their universe. I think that's really, really powerful. It's better you know, when it's proactive as opposed to like, great, someone just sat on our head. Um, but you know, sometimes you get there how you get there. Um, so we're doing a lot of work, I think, looking at like the, the technology of the future, but more importantly, how it will impact consumers today, you know, and, and really the evolution of your own customer base. Co-founder of Before Alpha, he's the lead alpha, Gregarious. Great to have you on theCUBE. Final thought, you've seen many waves. You've worked as a CTO, you worked on startups, you worked with databases, you worked with social technology, now you're working kind of helping customers put together the future. What's the big learnings that you've seen over the past 10 years that you're putting into place now from a, from a practical perspective to, to bring to your customers? Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, everyone asks me like, what's the secret to innovation, right? It's the number one question I probably get. Um, I have a list, but the one thing I put at the top of the list is permission, right? Which is that organizations tend to fail at this because people don't feel like they have permission to do it, they don't have permission to fail, they don't have permission to not work on something else that's taking up 50% of their calendar, right? And I think, uh, you know, like you see it stands as an innovative culture, Right, like for other brands, companies, corporations to be successful, if they don't enable, permit, give that permission to their employees, they're never going to fit. Yeah, and certainly team. with cloud, you can try something new and iterate. We've seen the lean startup culture kind of That's growing, right. um, and, and artistry kind of coming in mainstream. Yeah. Thoughts on artistry and art and technology coming together? I think it was a natural peanut butter and jelly kind of moment from the beginning, right? Yeah. Um, I, you talk to any engineer, any developer, they view what they do as art, right? Um, and the expression of that, it takes an, any number of forms. Right? And the great news is on the front lines as they get more consumer tech with like Samsung and Apple, yeah. you're seeing guys out in the front lines really yeah. adding value, changing the scope of yeah. what's possible. Well, this is the creator movement, right? Yeah. Like that we're having here, it's a big theme at this event yeah. as well. Creator this movement, really building good apps, great technology. It's a cube creating great content here on the ground on the edge of the network here at the Samsung Developer Conference at Moscone West in San Francisco. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more after this short break.